We've seen uh, Dr. CJP give a fantastic talk about the uh, posterior wall, posterior column, and the lip fractures, which are probably going to be more uh, commonly encountered in your practice when you start your uh, pelvic acid level fractures. But uh, these are uh, the one uh, cases where we actually, I was just talking to Sir, and I just said that halfway through the operation, you feel, why the hell am I doing it? Is there nobody else who can take it on? Because it can be um, quite um, a task. So, uh, quickly, what we're going to do is describe the anatomy of the anterior acetabulum, uh, assess the anterior acetabulum on its rays quickly. Uh, one surgical approach that I'm going to describe is the iliac vinyl approach, and then uh, briefly talk about um, how to, uh, what are the treatment strategies for stabilizing these fractures. So we know uh, what is the anterior acetabulum. You've got the iliac ring itself. You've got the anterior wall of the acetabulum and the pubic ramus, the superior pubic ramus. That actually comprises, um, with the synthesis pubis itself, will comprise the entire um, anterior acetabulum. Um, so the essential element, um, you need to know these uh, six lines, which um, uh, need to be described every time um, you're looking uh, at an acetabular fracture. Um, in anterior uh, um, column and wall fractures, you basically get disruption of the iliopectineal line, which you can just see up here. So you can see that there is break in the iliopectineal line. The ischial line itself looks pretty much intact and there could be fractures which are extending into the iliac ring itself which will signify that there is an anterior element um, to uh, the fracture itself. Uh, the iliac fracture profile is best seen on iliac oblique view where you can see uh, the iliac ring uh, quite nicely and you can um, you see the variety of fractures. You can also see that the ischial line itself is quite um, uh, intact so there is no element of the posterior fracture line. Um, to look at, um, if you see the obturator oblique view, you can just about see that the anterior piece or the anterior wall the fragment is being detached, which will uh, tell you more about the anterior wall or anterior column fractures. You should all obviously be aware of the lateral classification of the elemental and associated fractures, and uh, these are the varieties of the anterior wall involvement or the column involvement that you can get. Um, uh, what are the indications for operative treatment of these fractures? Um, uh, if the fracture, apart from the fractures which are extremely low, which are actually not going to matter in a weight-bearing patient, all the other fractures are probably need to be fixed. Apart from patients who are extremely elderly, uh, who are 80s, 85-year-old patients, who so the bone quality is going to be quite poor. So the indications remain the same as any articular fracture. It will be incongruity of the joint, stability of the joint, if the joint is unstable, or if there are intraarticular fragments, then obviously you need to go ahead and fix these fractures. So what are the uh, decision-making things that I need to consider? If uh, there is a dislocation, you need to reduce that dislocation. After that, if you're a young patient who's got a good, healthy bone stock, you need to go ahead and uh, consider ORI. If the patient is a frail patient, elderly patient with a low um, velocity of injury, he's developed an anterior acetabular fracture, then you might have to consider either an acute total hip replacement or a total hip replacement uh, in the future by treating that fracture maybe with uh, skeletal traction to, uh, for the time being. So the surgical approaches available to us are iliovinal approach, iliofemoral approach, or the modified stopper approach. I'm not going to go into details of, or actually not going to mention the other two approaches at all. I'm going to stick to iliovinal approach, which was initially described by the um, a legendary surgeon Le um, He had initial problems with infection with this approach and um, he modified his incision a little bit by taking the incision a little bit proximally uh, where the synthesis pubis is, starting prophylactic antibiotics and start using um, drains. So basically this approach creates three working windows which you need to understand what these three windows are, the boundaries of these three windows and that probably will be helpful for some people who are uh, still not done their exam. So the patient position is usually supine. I try to use it on a radio reduction table. You need to use a support under the sacrum, um, or you could do it in a floppy lateral position if you want to do both anterior and posterior approaches at the same time. It gives excellent access um, to anterior and interior aspect of the pelvis. Um, the risk of heterotopic ossification is much lesser as compared to the posterior approaches or the extensile approaches. The disadvantages are it is an extra articular approach, so you cannot see inside the joint you will not be able to see inside the joint. It does not give access to the posterior wall, uh, posterior wall uh, or posterior column fracture involvement. 
So the incision is uh, right two centimeter above the synthesis pubis, a curvilinear incision coming towards the iliac crest and then running along the iliac crest posteriorly. You go through uh, the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, and the first window, as Dr. Tucker has mentioned uh, in his fixation, is an incision which is similar to taking a bone graft from the iliac crest. But instead of going on the outside uh, cortex of the iliac crest, you remain on the inside aspect of the pelvis. So you reflect all the muscles subperiosteally from the inside of the pelvis and you will encounter a nutrient vessel as you go down towards the pelvic bin. You need to have some bone wax ready so that you can pack it onto the nutrient vessel because otherwise it can keep on oozing quite significantly. The second thing you do is after you develop your first window, this is the iliac wing, this is medial, this is lateral, so you subperiosteally elevated um, the iliac musculature from inside of the pelvis. Then you have to release what is known as the conjoint tendon, where you need to understand your anatomy uh, for the surgeon, from the general surgery days. You need to release the, the external oblique uh, muscle first, and after that you encounter a structure which is known as a conjoint tendon. So you need to release that conjoint tendon of internal oblique and the transverse abdominis from the inguinal ligament, leaving a little bit of cuff of tissue so that you can re repair it at the end of your dissection. The majority of the clockwork or the important vessels and nerves are there right in front of you. So what you try and develop is there is a fascia which is attached to the inguinal ligament and goes down to the pelvic brim. So this section is like <coughs> taken, uh, it's a coronal section. And this uh, fascia is called as the iliopectineal fascia. This is lateral, this is medial. So that iliopectineal fascia separates the lacuna muscularum, which is uh, the iliosaurus muscle and the femoral nerve, with the lacuna vascularum, which is the vessels um, onto the medial side. So the femoral artery and vein is on the medial side. And it is a vertical partition between the lateral structures and the medial structures. So you need to isolate it, make uh, some blunt dissection on either side of the fascia, and you need to divide this fascia from superior to inferior right up to the pubic table, tubercle. Only then you will be able to get uh, an access to the superior pubic ramus. Um, approaching an anterior acetabulum is like doing a lipo approach. So you make an incision, um, uh, maybe like you do it in tibia, you do uh, an incision along the medial malleolus and then you make an incision in the mid shaft and slide a plate. Similarly here you have to create the first window. The second window is between um, uh, iliosaurus muscle and the femoral vein, uh, femoral nerve and the vessels in the uh, midline. So this is the iliopectinal fascia, which is the picture taken from the top. On one side you got the vessels, on the other side you got the iliosaurus muscle and the nerve with you. Um, now at this stage it is important to look for a vessel which is an abnormal communication, which is known as a corona mortis artery. This is the superior pubic ramus. And you need to identify that, because if you don't ligate that artery, you can get torrential bleeding. It is an abnormal communication between um, uh, the external iliac group of vessels and the obturator group of vessels. So it can be an uh, anomalous origin from the obturator vessel itself. And if you cut it, then you can be in big trouble. So look for it. So there are three windows. Though. So let me quickly explain you what the three windows are. First, or the lateral window is, iliac wing is here, iliosaurus muscle with the superficial lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and the femoral nerve has been retracted medially. So this is your first working window. From this approach, you can approach the sacroiliac joint as well as the entire iliac wing. Okay, so that is the first window. What is the second window? The second window is between the iliosaurus muscle and femoral nerve, which is now retracted laterally, and the femoral vessels, which is retracted medially. And this is your pelvic brain. So that is your second window. And the third window is medial to the spermatic cord and the vessels. This is the rectus, which is uh, abdominis, which has been uh, reflected from the symphysis pubis and this is the medial window. So you have to slide the plate under the vessels, under the muscle and then fix it proximally onto the iliac window. So it is a, a difficult dis uh, dissection for this approach. I don't personally isolate the spermatic cord and the structures. So I do the first two windows um, as uh, has been shown here. So I do this window, do this window. I don't dissect here. I extend my incision medially and make a central midline incision uh, like a pan and incision where you uh, develop a plane between your recti and reflect the bladder and you can directly land on to the superior pubic ramus. And that I feel is a much safer approach in my hand. The dangers are obviously significant. You can damage the femoral vessels, you can damage the femoral nerve, you can damage the corona mortis artery which can lead to torrential bleeding. 
So all of these things are important. If you don't close the inguinal canal properly, I use 2 0 proline to close it, you can get a hernia. So all these uh, things need to uh, um, understand. So in conclusion, for the approach, I think iliangonal approach in my hands remains the workhorse for treating anterior column and wall fractures. It gives me good exposure, least number of complications, but you cannot actually look inside the joint itself. So how do we deal with an anterior wall fracture? So um, iliangonal approach, you need to look at the window 2, which is between the vessels and the nerve. You need to distract the femoral head, so either can have a good uh, person a uh, good um, young resident actually pull him up to the leg and uh, fixation with the pelvic brim plate. So this is an anterior wall fracture. You can reduce it through the second window. You can use lag screws which are parallel to the joint. So you need to have some 3D understanding of the anatomy to fix these fragments. And then you can use a long plate which is fixed to the pelvic um, uh, brim onto the ilium and then onto the symphysis pubis to the medial side. For anterior column fractures, the first thing you need to do is actually reduce the iliac wing. This is one fracture, anterior column fracture, where you, where you don't start reconstructing the joint because you can't see the joint. So you have to start from the periphery, fix the peripheral element first. So uh, fix this maybe with a lag screw um, uh, like this. You can have a couple of lag screws or a small four hole plate to fix the eye leg wing fracture and then the rest of the fixation can carry on uh, with a, a brim plate. Associated anterior column and posterior hemitransverse fracture, um, where you get anterior column fracture with the posterior hemitransverse, you can approach through the anterior side, fix the pelvic with the pelvic brim plate, and then you can use a lag screw to fix the posterior uh, column fracture itself. These are a variety of techniques of application of clamps, which I think is a little bit too much uh, to go into details for. So I'm going to skip them. Uh, how we actually go into technicalities of fixation. So today we will, in the workshop as well, concentrate only on the posterior wall and posterior column fracture. We are not going to go into too much of details of um, anterior wall and column fracture. So the post-operative protocol is obviously give prophylactic antibiotics for 48 hours, CPM for the hip and knee joint, um, I get an APA x-ray of the acetabulum, post-operatively check for congruency, very rarely we do get CT scans, we start mobilizing them, depending on whether or not there are any other injuries, get them mobilizing with touch weight bearing for the first six weeks, get an x-ray at six weeks time, and then start partial weight bearing for further six weeks. And at three months, you can decide whether or not uh, you can get them full weight bearing. So in summary, these are complex injuries requiring meticulous assessment, as has been described by the previous speaker. There is place for conservative management for fracture, which actually maintains congruency of the femoral head, with both columns as the acetabulum and especially in elderly patients where you might want to avoid a major surgery. And the operative treatment obviously has to be carried out in experienced hands. This is uh, something which you should not uh, attempt um, on your own um, uh, in a setup which is not geared up for managing all the complications. So anatomical reduction obviously is a keystone because it's an intraarticular fracture and you try and avoid extensile approaches like an extended ideal femoral approach for fixation of these fractures. Thank you.